One day you're in the mountains walking past a lake and see a fish that's near death. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with that fish. On your walk the next day, there's another fish sick and dying. And day after day, as you walk past the lake, there's even more fish that are sick and dying. I thought something was wrong with the fish, but I wonder if something's wrong with the lake. As you travel through the mountains, each lake you come to has the same scene, a lot of fish that are sick and dying. I was focusing on the fish, but now I wonder, is something wrong with the source of the water in that region that is making the fish sick? Maybe it's the groundwater that's feeding the lakes in the area. This analogy developed by the Racial Equity Institute illustrates our tendency to tie social problems to individual behaviors and decisions, the sick fish. However, racism and other forms of oppression in our history, systems, structures, and policies are the root causes, the groundwater of these inequalities, the polluted lake. These systems and structures shape the opportunities people have to be healthy and thrive in each community. The jobs available and who has access to them, the quality of schools and how that impacts and influences students' success, the access to affordability and use of healthcare, the neighborhoods and spaces where people live, work and play, and the ways people interact with each other in all of those settings, all of which are under the umbrella of the term social determinants of health. These are the kinds of conditions and the environments in which people are born, grow, live, learn, work, and worship that affect health. There are three major ways in which social determinants may affect specific populations. First, Differences in exposure. Everyone is vulnerable to stress and environmental toxins. However, certain population groups, because of structural inequalities and racism, experience differences in economics, employment, education, and housing, and may be more likely than others to be exposed to social and physical environments that are harmful, stressful, and compromise their health. For example, People of color and poor people are more likely to live closer to where toxic chemicals are produced, processed, or stored. As a result, a family or entire community can be impacted by unsafe drinking water, polluted air, or other contaminants. Second, differences in vulnerability. A family's ability to fix the source of contamination makes them more vulnerable than other families to health problems. The family may not realize their water is unsafe. When they do, the family and other community members contact the service provider to advocate for resolution, but are offered no options to mitigate the problem. Adults and children in the family may get sick. Third, differences in consequences. Differences in wealth, social standing, connectedness, and other factors can lead to very different outcomes where health issues are concerned. Communities with social networks that do not include policy decision makers may have a harder time making changes and a tougher time escaping the harms that exist in their neighborhoods and workplaces. For a family with higher income and social standing, unsafe water may be a short-term annoyance until they get resolution from the service provider or move to a home with safer water. However, a family with lower income has limited options. This family may have no other option but to remain in their home, identify alternate ways to access safe water, and continue to fight for mitigation for months or even years. Continued exposure to unsafe water and the inability to pay for regular health care or medical treatment will result in severe illness or worse. The difference can result in diminished health from multiple family members, job loss, homelessness, and additional consequences for the children. Social determinants affect us all. The era of COVID spotlights our collective vulnerability and dependence on one another. 
Our humanity is threatened when one death is treated as a tragedy, while a million deaths are brushed off as a statistic. We have to appreciate the value of everyone's lives. When thinking about social determinants of health, emphasize health equity. Let's think about health equity in a way that's forward-looking, focuses on assets, yet recognizes and accounts for systems and historical injustice. You may often hear the term health inequalities or disparities when it comes to talking about differences in health outcomes. Let's instead shift our focus from disparity to equity. Health equity is the assurance of the conditions needed to be healthy for all people, regardless of identity. Dr. Kamara Jones offers a framework and checklist for identifying equity-minded solutions. Achieving health equity requires valuing all individuals and populations equally and recognizing and rectifying historical injustices while also providing the necessary resources according to need. Health disparities will be eliminated when health equity is achieved. To make health equity a reality, we must think critically about the social determinants impacting health. Ask yourself, what are the structural factors that influence the capacity of individuals or populations to reach their full potential for health and well being. Instead of only looking at the fish, look at the polluted lake and think about the groundwater. Pay attention, be aware of, and create strategies that reach beyond the surface to make the most meaningful steps towards health equity. Learn more about how others are tackling social determinants of health at these resources. <laughs>